Hey guys, Weeby News here, and today we are back with yet another video. And today we're going to be reacting to Five Nights at Freddy's sister location lore. My very lovely moderator, Bree the Cookie Monster, gave me a list of different videos to watch in order to understand the sister location lore. So I'm gonna be going in order of the list that she gave me. And yeah, I'm excited to learn more about this game, especially since this one was so much more lore heavy than the other ones. And I feel like similarly to FNAF 4, I feel I feel like I understand the story for the most part, but I feel like I'll probably be throwing a bunch of curveballs once I watch this video. So the first thing she wanted me to check out was Circus Baby Story, and this fan animation is by Shio Ryu. I'll be sure to link their account in the description if you'd like to check them out. I'm guessing, yeah, it'll kind of be going over like um, that story that baby kind of told us when we were hiding from the other baby. <laughs> I think the little girl who got scooped is the girl that became baby. I think it is kind of like the origin story. I guess it's just weird because Circus Baby, she kind of told that story from the perspective of Circus Baby and not the little girl, but I guess she could have just been like saying it from that perspective to try to like trick us. I'm not sure. And then, yeah, it seemed like the little girl was Mike Afton's daughter, the one who ends up possessing Circus Baby because I can't remember exactly what was said, but I feel like it was heavily implied that she was Mike Afton's daughter. So that is the other sort of theory that I'm rolling with before going into all of this. Okay, but yeah, let's go ahead and watch it. Baby story. Oh, I'm nervous. But very curious. Okay. Starting off with Circus Baby looking slay. Did you know that I was on stage one? Okay, day? yeah, it is the story. It wasn't for very long. Yeah. Only one day. What a wonderful day, though. I was in a small room with balloons and Oh, man. <laughs> I'm like realizing this. I'm like, oh, God, do I have to watch a video for like scooping the little girl? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> no one sat at the tables, though, but children would run in and out. Okay. Some were afraid of me. Others enjoyed my songs. Music was always coming from somewhere else. Somewhere Down else. All. I would always count the children. I'm not sure why. Oh yeah, this was kind of weird. I was always acutely aware of how many there were in the room with me. Yeah, she was like really emphasizing the counting thing. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I kind of wonder if there was like some kind of significance for that, but I never really figured it out. Two. Yep, then here we three, go. Then two, then three, then four, then two, then none. Yeah. They usually... I guess it is kind of like one of those things, too, when you're like a performer and you're like, kind of, what's the word? Like, insecure and in your head. And like, because I've been there, too, when you're like on stage and you're like singing or performing and then it's like, people come in and then they leave and you feel like insecure and you get upset because it's like, why are they leaving? So I guess it could be kind of alluding to that feeling that she has of like, just wanting to be watched and like, loved, you know? Played together in groups of two or three. I was covered in glitter. I smelled like birthday cake. There were two, then three, then five, then four. I can do something yeah. special. Did you know that? Oh god. I can make ice cream. <laughs> Yay! Although I only did it once. <laughs> it was human flavored. <laughs> It really was only this one time? Is this the time she's referring to where she did it only once? Like, it ended up just scooping a girl's eyeball out, but it was close enough. <laughs> close enough. It's basically the same thing as vanilla ice cream. There were four, then three, then two, then one. Ugh. Something happened when there was one. Oh, Jesus. A little girl standing by herself. Okay, she gets a face. I was no longer myself oh jesus and i stopped singing my stomach uh -oh. opened and there was ice cream i couldn't move at least not until she stepped closer there was screaming oh, no. for a moment but only for a moment only for a moment i don't know just kind of the way she says that kind of feels weird too it was only for a moment so she didn't experience that much pain it was a quick death at least let me make that clear it is interesting though i don't think i really paid attention to the fact that she mentioned she like wasn't herself for a little bit i wonder what like possessed her or like came over her to make her i don't know start acting different you know what i mean 
was it like something in her programming? Because like these models were made by Mike Afton and he's, you know, somehow related to William Afton, I assume. So I not really sure if he put some kind of like, I don't know, sort of malicious malware in there <laughs> that makes them act that way. I'm not totally sure. Just uh, just a thought, though. Then other children rushed oh, in again, God. but they couldn't hear her over the sounds of their own excitement. Oh, Jesus. I still hear her sometimes. Why did that happen? <sighs> don't know. Huh. Maybe that is it. There's something that overcame her that made her feel that way or start acting differently. Maybe she isn't possessed by this little girl then. I think I probably was wrong about that. And her eyes in this too, it does kind of remind me of like the William Afton ghost eyes, you know what I mean? So I don't know if that's like also, I don't know, important somehow. I guess we'll see. Did she go inside? It kind of seemed like she went inside her stomach too, didn't she? Cause it kind of looks like there's blood coming out of there too. And so I guess they couldn't hear her screaming because she was like inside the animatronic now. It does kind of seem like that's also the implication. Okay, yeah, it was a very good animation. It was very smooth. Everything looked really nice. Um, it definitely kind of gave me a better visual too of that story that we heard like in the game. And yeah, once again, shout out to Shiru for making this fan animation. Okay, so next we're gonna check out the rest of the sister location endings. I got the scooper slash true ending. So gosh, it looks like there's three other endings that I haven't gotten. So I guess we're gonna check those out. And these endings were uploaded by IUL, IT, TMX, so I will link their channel in the description as well. And yeah, let's go ahead and watch it. Access granted. Okay. Okay. Secret room. It seems that you have accidentally wandered into oh! a restricted area. Oh! You oh, wait a second! Oh no! <laughs> I see him! I see the little golden Freddy plush! I was like, is that the same one that um, the crying child had in FNAF 4? I was like, it looks like him, and it's got the little fucking William Afton eyes like him. <laughs> so my brain is churning already! Okay, okay, okay. Due to the sensitive nature of the materials that you may be exposed to here, you will not be allowed to leave until the cleanup crew arrives at 6 a.m. Oh, Jesus so Christ. So hang tight. Rest assured that you will be promptly rescued. Another mini game, fired, I guess? Then sent home. <laughs> Thank you fired. for being an employee. Cool. We hope that your experience has not been as regrettable as ours. <laughs> not dead yet, so, you know, that's always a plus. Interesting. Oh, shit. She's back. Okay. Oh, whoa. This is like a whole separate thing. Dang, a whole separate little mini game. Oh shit. Is that, was that the other guy? The other clown guy I saw at the end of the scooper ending? Cause yeah, I didn't see much of him. Oh, that's so cool that they have like a separate kind of area for like a, um, you know, more original Five Nights at Freddy's like uh, gameplay. That's so neat. That's so cool. Oh, wow. Uh oh, uh oh, little girl making noise. Is that supposed to be like the little girl from the story, maybe? Isn't this why you came? Isn't this why you came here? Oh, shit. Okay. I do kind of want to see a better glimpse of- Oh yeah, there he is! It is him! I didn't really get to see a good glimpse of what he looked like. Oh shit. Who is this? Is that the little girl? Maybe? Maybe. Oh god, he's so scary looking. <laughs> or she, they. They are super creepy looking. He looks so big too, I remember in the scooper ending. Oh my god, just like completely made out of wires too, like their whole body. It looks kind of like the endoskeleton. They're almost out of power too. It must be pretty hard to preserve energy in this one. We'll find a way out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Shift complete! That's so cool that they had a mini game where you could do, yeah, just kind of like a classic Five Nights at Freddy's uh, sort of game. That's so cool! I did like how they changed it up for this one though. I think it was a good call overall. 
Okay. As the trees <laughs> sway in the wind, no way. so also do emotions <laughs> sway between star-crossed love. Yes, more of the immortal and the restless. Perfect. <laughs> this is the only thing I desired from this game. I can't believe I missed this. Oh, I love two. The <laughs> you have the exotic butters on top of the TV as well. Lovers. You burned down my house. <laughs> you call that a house? It was like a morgue in there. <laughs> I may be undead, but you're heartless. <laughs> you need to see your son. The baby isn't mine. Oh my god. He ate the cat. Oh Sounds Jesus. Like something he got from your side of the family. Not the little guy. Well, how's this? I'm keeping the diamond ring. The joke's on you. I found it in a kid's meal. <laughs> what you the hell? A kid's meal? <laughs> oh, Vlad. Clara. <laughs> Why is she like that? <laughs> Oh my god, it was a free prize from a kid's As meal? As the hair on the back of a cat stands up straight, so also does the love between Vlad and Clara stand up <laughs> against all no! obstacles. Not the little guy! The no! The I hate the this baby! Support? Stay tuned next season for those answers <laughs> and more. Dude, I hope the cat's ghost haunts them and eats the kid, dude. That's what I want. <laughs> it's fucked up. Oh god, is the animatronic? I was gonna show up here. Hey, you watching the Immortal and the Restless with me? Oh, he looks kind of more fucked up now, doesn't he? <laughs> hey! <laughs> How you doing? What's up? I'm sure nothing bad happened after that. <laughs> I'm sure we just chilled on the couch and watched some, watched some movies together, binged Immortal and the Restless together. <laughs> Shared some popcorn. That was it. They just they just wanted some popcorn too. That's, that's all they wanted <laughs> We were just vibing together. Okay fake ending interesting. It did seem like well actually now that I'm thinking about it I just assumed that Sergius baby the girl was the one that like took over my body But would it have been this animatronic instead the clown looking? One and would that be the little girl that was killed by circus baby in the story? Would she have possessed this animatronic and then she went into my body at the end? Maybe? <laughs> like, maybe? I could see that potentially being the case, but I guess we'll see. The end. Just an idea. <laughs> the fucking butter basket. <laughs> okay, yeah, this was the one I tried to unlock, I think. Some of the mods said that if you did this game perfectly and then you went and did like the opposite of her instructions, you would get an ending, but I was struggling a lot. <laughs> it's kind of harder than you'd think to uh, beat all these kids in the time frame. Oh, of course you get ice cream <laughs> at the end of this. <laughs> Just like in the scooping video, how the little girl gets ice cream. <laughs> of course. Here we go. Oh uh, yeah, it's the girl from the animation. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I think I just saw her get scooped! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, what the fuck is this? Okay. Oh, this is like that other mini game? <laughs> you did you Golden Freddy's nose. Oh, God, this would have scared the shit out of me. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Oh my god, what are they doing? Are they trying to Send mess a dance for the another day, oxygen? Perhaps. Oh, was that? Oh, okay, that was, um, god, I can never think of her name. Bellarina? I can never remember her name. <laughs> Something like that, the Bellarina one. Ship complete. We get more immortal? No. Oh! Purple guy. Oh, he's looking kind of messed up, too. Okay, William. Everybody's staring at him. Yep, that's that <laughs> weird purple dude who kills children. Obsessed with animatronics. What is he? What the? What the fuck was that? You'll die. You won't 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 die. She's you talking won't about die. becoming an animatronic. Okay, girl, I get it. I believe you. Oh, the eyes. Oh, what? The 
eyes down there too. Okay, yikes. <laughs> Interesting. I think she was probably talking about that, though. Like, you won't die when you become an animatronic or something along those lines. I believe so. Okay, let's keep watching. Seems to be another ending. That would be so much fun to let's play. Oh, shit. Oh, is there, like, an ending if you die? Shift complete. <laughs> it kind of seemed like you got eaten by Freddy, but... <laughs> Close enough! I guess it was like right on the edge, maybe, of like dying and like making it to the end of the night. Father, it's me, Michael. Oh, it is Mike. I did it. What the? I found it. It was right where you said it would be. What the hell is wrong with they this were family? All there. They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. I put her back together, just like you asked me to. She's free now, but something is wrong with me. I should be dead, but I'm not. I've been living in shadows. There is only one thing left for me to do now. I'm going to come find you. I'm going to come find you. What? Oh, what the hell is that? What? What was that? Oh, no. Find you. Oh, wait. I was like, it looks like Springtrap, I think. I think so. Wait. Oh, my God. I'm so confused. Is Mike in Springtrap? I think that's what this is implying, right? That Mike is Springtrap or in Springtrap. We thought that was William though. So I'm like, oh wait, it says Fazbear's Fright on it too. What? What? Oh my God. Cause I assumed it was like Mike talking at the end of this game. But now that I'm seeing like Fazbear's Frights, it's like, I'm thinking that it means that Mike is giving his monologue at the end of that game. And I guess he's talking about like, is he talking about the cutscenes that we got from that game too, where it was like the kids and they saw a purple guy and they put him in the suit. The kids in the cutscenes of FNAF 3, they thought Mike, aka purple guy, was William Afton, but he was actually Mike Afton. They killed him, put him in Springtrap, and now Mike inside Springtrap is looking for William Afton. <laughs> I think so. I think I'm following along. I think next we get the lore video. Thank God. <laughs> I need somebody to explain this to me <laughs> to make sure I'm following along. Okay. But yeah, um, next we're going to watch this retrospective. It's by Sagan Hawks. And yeah, hopefully I can begin to understand the lore for now. <laughs> Always for now. That's the best we can do with this series. It seems like. Welcome back, everyone, to our Five Nights at Freddy's retrospective series. Today, we're talking about Sister Location. Okay. This one really marked the next phase for Five Nights at Freddy's in a lot of different ways. That's what I've been hearing. This one is going to be long, and my hope is a little scary. <laughs> a little scary. So let's get started. Oh, no. <laughs> I've already dealt with the scaries. I don't need any more. Now, it's important to mention here that a lot of the teasers that were going on around the time of uh, Sister Location and a lot of the early stuff was also happening the same time as oh, uh, yeah. FNAF World Update 2, so FNAF there's some World. overlap here. But the first big mystery to solve was the line. FNAF World is kind of divisive, it seems like, in the fan base. I think, like, the creator doesn't like FNAF World, or I feel like I've heard that Scott didn't really care for it, or he's not very proud of it or something, but don't quote me on that. And a lot of the early stuff was also happening the same time as uh, FNAF World Update 2, so there's some overlap here. Okay. But the first big mystery to solve was the lines. This teaser was released on Scott Games and slowly added letters as time went on. There were he's plenty so of cryptic. ideas as to what it could be, but then we found it and confirmed it. Someone okay. went digging into the metadata of the image okay. and found the name Sister Location. Okay. Now, for the life of me, I can't... So that was just kind of like the teaser before, like, the game got announced, basically. I love how Scott does that. I think he, he knows his fan base well, that they love to, like, read into things and solve, you know, mysteries and cryptic stuff. ...find any actual reference of this happening. I just know it did. I have a clear memory of someone posting on the subreddit that they went into the metadata, like, Photoshop data of the image, and they found Sister Location, but... 
I couldn't find anything on the subreddit this many years later, and I couldn't find anything on YouTube about it. I just feel okay. like I remember it happening. And if I remember correctly, this is what made Scott sort of fast forward and just release the full next teaser, Sister okay. Location. There was never just one. Oh. And behind, a new never animatronic. Almost like the toy animatronics, but not quite. She is so horrifying looking. Her design is just... Oh my god, especially with like, the fact that the face plates like open and stuff. Ugh. Time there was a lot of other discoveries being made. Horrifying. Uh, someone found Scott Coffin's copyright logs and saw that he had added a bunch oh, of new names. Nice. Baby, Ballora, Funtime Freddy and Foxy, Biddy Bab, Biddy Ennard, Bab. and Mini Rena. <laughs> Who exactly these characters were was highly debated, but there was a surprising amount of accuracy with a lot of people's early predictions. There was also the source code. At okay. this point in the series, I'm sure you know that checking out the source code on Scott Cawthon's websites is extremely important. Scott had hidden a show schedule Lots in the metadata the for the there. new characters and also introduced the oh, name nice. Afton Robotics. Ooh, yes. Mike's weird little robotics company that he talks about. This was a huge deal. For those who don't know, in the Silver Eyes novel, William Afton is the name of the murderer. So his name held a lot of weight. There's also Chica's Party World, which... Okay. I think it's still up for debate what it actually means. Yeah, it was one like that. big thing I remember. It's like Chico wasn't even brought up or shown at all in this one. From this era was the adult theory popularized by the fan game creator Pop Goes. Okay. For a while, this schedule and all of this stuff was connected to this theory that somehow the next game was going to be about a robotic what? strip club. <laughs> what? Where did they come up with that? You know, guys, we failed in the pizzeria business. So what what else should we try? Oh, the strip club business. You know, in the third game, you do see there's like in the future, there's a bunch of like fanboys for the animatronics or like, you know, there's a bunch of furries who are into this, into this franchise. Let's just make them a strip club. Come on. What the hell? Where did that come from? I remember thinking at the time, this didn't really make a lot of sense for the <laughs> next direction that Scott Coffin was gonna go. And I think this is what inspired him to add oh an extra God. line to the source code. He's like, there's not gonna be a strip club, you degenerates. <laughs> Specified children's, children's entertainment. entertainment. Now let's talk more about the- <laughs> Wanna put away that theory really quickly actual teasers. Oh there was my the God. full reveal of Baby, which had a little bit going on. Okay. Some people thought they could see the reflection of Springtrap in her nose, and there was oh, debate as to whether she had I hair or can. just a jester hat. And then there was the Ennard reveal. Ennard, that's his name. I was like wondering. I was like, I don't even think I ever learned this one's name. Oh, they are terrifying looking. That line at the bottom, there's a little of me in every body. Oh. People quickly caught on to that space. Every, every body. body. However, exactly how it connected to the lore wouldn't like a little bit of their soul in every different animatronic body, maybe? Something like that? The lore wouldn't quite be clear until the game came out. Then the Biddy Babs and the classic <laughs> line, don't hold it against us. Okay, that's what um, that's what those were called, two little babies. I was wondering that, don't hold it against us. So are they like uh, being controlled against their will or something maybe? I'm just thinking of that Britney Spears song, Hold It Against Me. They're just Britney stands. Honestly, same. <laughs> same, Biddy Babs. You guys are just like me for real. A gameplay hint with the Get Back to Your Stage teaser. Okay. And then, of course, the trailer. In typical Scott okay. Coffin fashion, the trailer was full of quick flashes of gameplay and cryptic messages. However, this time, there's a lot more to theorize about. Yep, the lines very. don't hold it against us, the completely new setting and themes, and the audio. Some people oh, thought this, this was a bunker place. in the robot apocalypse or a nuclear fallout had occurred. This also had the opening which referenced all the other games, quite aptly, I'd say. Yeah. Oh, and I almost forgot. Sister Location ended up being canceled oh, due to what leaks. The? Except obviously it wasn't. What? Brightening this teaser huh. image, we get a portion of a news article explaining that Circus Baby's Pizza World's opening has been canceled due to gas oh. leaks and that the building was sold. Okay, just like another Easter egg. Scott is like so creative with these like Easter eggs and kind of like fake canceling the game to show that um, Baby's location was the place that was actually canceled. Interesting. And that the building was sold. However, things aren't quite over for Circus Baby yet. I could keep talking about all the theories and ideas people had around this time, but let's just get into it. October 7th, 2016, Sister Location was released. I kind of wonder what the reception was to this game. It's definitely very different, now but the gameplay of I thought it was a really good direction, personally. Oh, from yeah, here, you have to keep one. a series of spring blocks wound up while preventing mini arenas from climbing on the top of your suit. If they do, you're dead. Yeah. But by shaking them off, you loosen your spring locks yeah. as well. 
So Such it's a delicate, a delicate balance. delicate balance. Night 4 is so difficult, there was actually a patch release to make it easier. Yeah, I heard Even about then, this. Even then, it's the only base game night of any of the FNAF games I haven't completed. Oh, really? It's just absurdly hard wow. and lasts so long. That's crazy. Yeah, I heard some people mention that, like, um, yeah, the original version of it was so hard that, like, nobody could beat it besides, like, Markiplier. He was, like, the only one. <laughs> and that, yeah, they had to do a patch to make it easier. It was really hard. Like, um, when I was playing it, I got stuck on this night for quite some time. There is another another aspect of gameplay though an alternate ending that has an entire other gameplay yeah, section crazy. we'll get into the story significance of that later but for now let's just talk about the gameplay when baby yeah. leads you through the dark room instead of following <laughs> her instructions you can move to a secret room where things are a lot more familiar an office two doors and a camera system yeah like most of the other FNAF so cool yeah literally just like the same like classic FNAF vibe of games the goal is to survive until 6 a.m. The main part of this is listening. Entered can be on your right, center, vent, or left. Using the sound, okay. you can keep track. Interesting, it's just one animatronic too. Kind of reminds me of a FNAF 3 in that way, where you're just protecting yourself against Springtrap in that one, but you're just protecting yourself against Entered in this one. Seems like it at least. Where he is and use the camera to see how close he is. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Keep track and close the door. Things get harder at 4 a.m. when you need to close the door before checking on the camera like Freddy in FNAF okay. 1. While being simple, it's extremely difficult because you have a very small amount of power. Mm -hmm. But generally, it's back to basics. Conserve power, check the doors, and be <laughs> so lucky. Creepy. Aside from all that, there's <laughs> oh. not a lot else to talk about in the gameplay. Like I said, it's very linear and story-based. There is, of course, the custom night update, but I'll okay. talk about that in more detail later. Until then, let's move on. This would the custom night be for that second um, gameplay section, maybe? Visuals! When it comes to visuals, it changed a lot for the series, but is actually kind of a back to basics for Scott. If you look at his career, his futuristic and sci-fi sort of modeling is actually what he's used to. So the change in look from an unsettling house or creepy restaurant to a futuristic mm -hmm. style bunker with well, you can't even call them animatronics <laughs> at this point. They're just full-on yeah. robots. It, they it's do. honestly the natural progression if you look at Scott's career. They do. They. I remember thinking that. They just look so, like, futuristic. I wonder when this is supposed to take place, like, timeline-wise. Because I know FNAF 3 was supposed to take place, like, what, like, 30 years in the future or something crazy like that? So, yeah, I'm kind of curious about when this takes place, too. He's been a sci-fi man at heart this whole time. Moving on to the robots of this okay. place, from the Biddy Babs and Mini Arenas all <laughs> the way up so to creepy. the Babies and the Ennards, there's something specific about them that makes them unique. They most closely resemble the toy animatronics, yeah. but even that is only surface level. They do definitely resemble the toy animatronics the most. I think I noticed that as well. I kind of wondered if they were, like, related to them somehow. It'd be interesting if they had even, like, the similar features. Like, I know the toy animatronics had that, like, what was it, that predator scanning feature? It'd be kind of interesting if these had those too, you know? While the original animatronics were plush or had fabric on the outside, mm -hmm. and the toy animatronics seem to be made from plastic, the Funtime animatronics are made from metal, segmented mm. into different parts that allows for them to seemingly change subtly. Yeah. While on the surface this just seems like an odd design choice, it actually makes a bit of sense once we get into the theory oh, section. Oh, interesting. Either way, the design of these animatronics are no longer relying on the fear of mascots. Okay, interesting. I was wondering why they had, like, the face plates that open up and stuff, you know what I mean? I was like, I'm not really sure what the technical reason for that would be. Now it's like clowns, robots, and the future horror aesthetic that may remind you of 1950s horror films and space okay. horror like Alien. When it comes to the actual facility you're in, the sci-fi sort of space theme fits here as well. Wire, buttons, flashing lights, and control mm. panels. This is clearly higher tech stuff than we're used to. You remember thinking this area looked kind of weird? I was like, am I in a space station? <laughs> like, a, like a nuclear bunker? I thought we were thinking it was kind of weird looking. I'm glad to know I wasn't the only person who thought that. There's a strong emphasis on the lighting in this game, with a lot of variation. Blue is probably yeah. the strongest color used in this, but green and purple also have a okay. prominent space here as well. The feeling of being in a place of entertainment is very much a facade, but I think that's on purpose. Okay. You're basically crawling through vents and storage containers, but there's random decorations and masks mm -hmm. hung up around, going back to the classic theme of Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> Shitty corporate veneer. Oh, and a quick note on the home you go to between nights. Uh -oh. Remember how I said there was uh, a yeah. 1950s feel? It does have very 1950s decoration. I never really picked up on that. Well, look no further than the old TV and wallpaper. 
plus, we couldn't talk about the visuals without talking about how there was a whole animated show thrown in just for fun. <laughs> Is there gonna be some lore with the immortal and the restless? Please. <laughs> Please let there be some lore, that'd be so freaking funny. If you zoom in behind the vampire, you can actually see a burned down spring trap. I would not put it past Scott, to be honest. Okay, let's talk about the plot on a surface level. Like okay. I said, it's a lot more linear and story-based uh, this time around. This is so what I've been waiting there's for. There's actually quite a lot to cover here. The game starts with a cutscene as two yep. voices talk. Oh my god, this is some wild. Some investor of some kind and William Afton himself. Okay. They discuss the designs of the animatronics, and the investor seems confused and slightly concerned about the design choice. Okay, I thought they were talking to Mike Afton in this scene, actually, not William. Interesting. So it was William Afton who designed these animatronics. Why is Mike, why is his name on the little, like, um, you know, entry pad or whatever that we see later? I guess it'll get explained, but that's interesting. I really thought it was Mike in that scene. The game starts in an elevator as the hand unit explains your role here. Cleaning, yep, maintenance, and general repair. It's explained that after the closing of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, Circus Baby's Pizza World was created, and instead of restaurants, the animatronics are rented out to private parties. Okay, the yeah, this night... wasn't a restaurant. I kind of forgot about that part. These were only meant to be rented out for private parties. So I guess that's why you just kind of watch some of the little areas, and I guess, you know, technically speaking, people would just take them to a party later. Okay, that makes sense. I guess that kind of makes more sense to why this game looks the way it does, because I was like, man, this is a really futuristic bunker for like... <laughs> I don't know, the bottom of a pizzeria or something. Night goes off without a hitch using controlled shocks to control the animatronics back to oh their God, stage. Yeah. The next night, however, the power goes out and the baby animatronic reveals she's somehow sentient. She's trying to protect you from the other animatronics for some reason that yeah, isn't yeah. quite clear yet. Obviously a completely selfless reason. <laughs> you move to the scooping room and baby's true intentions <laughs> yeah, are revealed. Yeah, she takes over. As Ennard is revealed in the window, baby's voice explains that they've been trapped for so long, unable to escape. So basically, they're going to scoop out your innards and use your skin as a suit to escape. Okay, so they both enter my body, I guess, then, to escape. Interesting. It's kind of what it seems like he's implying. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> then you're scooped and we cut to a bathroom mirror. Eyes open, purple. Yep. Now that was all very surface level, but there's a lot more that we can dive into a little deeper. First, there's a little girl's voice between them. Yes, nights. I want to know about her. Judging by the you, fact girl. that there are only two British accents in the series, it seems like this is Mr. Afton's daughter. Okay. The general consensus pretty much is that this is the voice of Afton's daughter right before she gets attacked by Baby. Okay, so I was right about that, because that was my assumption too, is that she was the girl who gets attacked by Baby, and that story that, you know, Baby tells. And then she's also Afton's daughter. Is she William Afton's daughter or Mike Afton's daughter, though? Doing this opens up the ability to go to the private room, which has an entire other set of story elements. Oh. Entered trying to lure the player out, vague references to the player being William oh. Afton. It's all very confusing. What? We're William Afton? What? <laughs> Wait a second. Are we William Afton? What? You gotta, I gotta listen to that again. It's up the ability to go to the private room, okay. which has an entire other set of story elements. <laughs> Entered trying to lure the player out, vague references to the player being William Afton. God, I feel like that one episode of Spongebob when it's like, you're Squidward, he's Squidward. Who else is Squidward that I need to know about? It really feels like that, except with William Afton. Just omnipresent, it's fine, it's fine, it's whatever. It's all very confusing. Oh my god. Which is why we'll talk about the secrets and Easter eggs from here on to really understand more. Starting with the private room. Okay. In the private room, there are a set of static monitors in front of you and a Fredbear plush on the table. Oh, I wanted to know about the Fredbear plush. There's also a keypad. Entering 1983 into the oh. keypad switches on the monitors and we see cameras showing... The FNAF 4 house? Oh my it appears god. That the sister location building bunker thing what? is directly underneath the FNAF 4 house. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus Christ, what the hell? Okay, so it is a <laughs> nuclear bunker. Oh my god, I'm so confused on the lore now. I'm like trying to come up with like what I think is going on because I thought that that house was probably William Afton's house. Everybody's William Afton in this game. So, you know, I'm just saying it's William's house and we're playing as William in this. The maintenance workers were also William. <laughs> you know, that's just going to be my theory for everything moving forward. We're all William Afton and that's, that's just how it is. My chair is William Afton. That's why he's purple. Or actually was purple guy Mike Afton now. God, Jesus. It's getting so confusing. Okay, no, no, it's it's okay. I'm not I'm not losing my mind. 
yet. It appears that the sister location building bunker thing is directly underneath the FNAF 4 house. What and the hell? this is further evidenced by the power maintenance panel in night two. Here, you can see the layout of FNAF 4's house overlaid on top of the main compound. Moving- No f- Oh my god! No way! No fucking way! That is so wild, dude! If I would've just stopped pissing myself for a moment and looked at that! I don't know if I still would've figured it out, but really? Oh my god, that's crazy! Okay, I'm trying to, like, look at this. I'm like... Circus control, elevators, observatory. Where's the house at? Oh, there it is, isn't it? That's the room, that's the two hallways, isn't it? Oh my god. <laughs> I've literally gone insane. I feel like I'm losing my mind. God. Moving away from that for a moment, inside the game's files, there's actually blueprints of the animatronics, oh, yeah. which includes all sorts of design choices the investors might have been concerned about. Interesting. Mimic slash luring, storage tanks, parental voice sync and replay. Parental you voice sync? What the hell does that mean? They can <laughs> sound like your parents <laughs> to gain your trust? Jesus. Jesus, Mr. Afton, what is wrong with you? You can even see what has long been thought to be a child inside of Freddy's storage tank. Oh, These what the hell? These blueprints can also be seen very rarely on boot up. Unless lore relevant- What? There's a child inside there? Oh my god, is that his little feet and his arms? Ugh! Jesus Christ! Is it just like a corpse or something? Or are they just, you know, making sure it's child size? Just in case William Afton wants to shove another one in there. <laughs> Gotta make sure, you know? And the investors didn't question this at all. They were just like, yes, of course! It should be child sized! <laughs> Who knows? When another murderer wants to shove another kid in one of these suits, it's very important to the brand. Storage tank. These blueprints oh can God. also be seen very rarely on boot up. In less lore relevant huh. stuff, there's a lot of just random Easter eggs here and there. Bitty Babs and Mini Rena's popping up randomly, oh, Lulbit's okay. head appearing, Yendo, aka Yellow Endo or Golden Endo appearing oh. in the Funtime Auditorium, and of course the different nose. I've never heard about him, Yellow Endo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Endo just means endoskeleton. So I guess it's just like the endoskeleton of like Golden Freddy or something like that. And of course the different nose honks. <laughs> private parties during the day. <laughs> I want Freddy back! I want Freddy back! I'm so glad I didn't try to honk any of y'all's noses! Oh god, that's horrifying! Jesus! Oh, I just noticed! That's what's his face? Enter it, I think? That's his face up there. Wow, I didn't even notice that. And it's your job to get the robots back in proper working order before the final morning. I hate it, I hate it so much! You are now in the primary control module. Oh my course, god, I'm so glad I didn't do any of that during my playthrough. <laughs> I hate it with every part of my being. The more recently discovered random numbers. Oh, okay. At this point, it's not clear if this is leftover mm. debugging or if it's actually of any lore relevance. Interesting. Custom night. You thought we'd move right on to community and theories? Yeah, mm. all we've been talking about is base game. Then there was the custom night update. Okay. While Scott did say that the gameplay itself of this update was not canon, there is some lore relevant secrets here that are very important to the story. And it starts outside of the game itself. During this time, Scott Cawthon's two websites, FNAFWorld.com and ScottGames.com, were having a conversation in the source code. Hmm. It seems like it's Ennard, which is the amalgamation of all the animatronics, are, is arguing within itself. Oh. Baby and the other animatronics are having a fight, I guess, what and the Baby hell? is being ejected. That will be. <laughs> being ejected. They're playing Among Us. <laughs> cool. You're crowding us. Be quiet. You can't tell us what to do anymore. Yes, I can. You will do everything that I tell you to do. We outnumber you. That doesn't matter, dummy. We found a way to eject you. You would be lost without me. Okay, yeah, so FNAF World is definitely Circus Baby. Ha <laughs> ha, say goodbye to our friend. I can put myself back together. It definitely seems like it, at least. Okay, interesting. <laughs> it does kind of feel like a game of Among Us, though. <laughs> Among Us. Animatronics are having a fight, I guess, and Baby is being ejected. That will be really important for a future retrospective. Okay. But for now, let's move on to the Custom Night cutscenes. Before we talk about the secrets in the Custom Night, I want to talk quickly about the gameplay. Here, you're in the private room again with the Funtime crew. Yendo, Bonnet, Lulbit, and different variations of the Biddy Babs and Mini Rinas. Okay, so there is more Each one here, has a unique way of attacking the yeah. player. 
You can I thought it was just um, entered for a little bit. Or maybe that's just for that other game. Okay, yeah, I think the first game you play in here is the one was just entered. Then I guess the custom night has like all these other animatronics in it. I think so. Each one has a unique way of attacking the player. You can use the vents and doors like the private room, but controlled shocks also to send some of them back. Oh man, even the There's Foxy There's also different curtain. presets of game modes you can use, including that's different cool. hard modes. And that's where the secrets come in. Beating okay. the different modes on the varying hardest oh, difficulties yeah. reveals mini game style cutscenes. I don't know if I it's saw It's always this the same, one. someone walking down the street. But as the- It's like the purple guy vomiting one. <laughs> I guess this is what he's supposed to look like before he becomes purple guy or something modes get harder, the man walking oh. down the street gets more uh, rotted until he becomes hunched purple oh, and has wires hell? sticking out. Clearly, this is what the skin suit looks like. At the end, he spits out the endoskeleton and falls over. The endoskeleton makes its way into the sewer, and Baby's voice begins playing, You Won't Die. What the hell? So it was like a human skin over animatronic? What? <laughs> What? <laughs> the man walking down the street gets more uh, rotted until hmm. he becomes hunched purple and has wires sticking out. Wires sticking out? So he's just like an actual animatronic? Or like an animatronic fused with a human? I guess that's kind of how they all are. But this one might be more of like a actual, like um, somebody trying to do it. Was whoever this was like trying to fuse themselves with an animatronic so that they would like live longer. I wonder, I guess I could see them doing that if maybe they had like a terminal illness, they wanted to try to like extend their life. I guess like it makes sense why they look so happy at first, like walking down the street, like, hey, I'm all better now, I'm healthy. And then all of a sudden they start kind of rotting because it's just, it's just not right that they, you know, are fused with some kind of, you know, robot. I think, maybe? I don't know who this is though anymore. I'm totally confused about that though. Maybe Mike, but then I don't even think that makes sense because it kind of seemed like Purple Guy was, you know, he seemed okay in FNAF 3. He was walking around like normal, you know, before he got fused with a spring trap. This is what the skin suit looks okay. like. At the end, he spits out the endoskeleton and falls over. The endoskeleton okay. makes its way into the sewer and Baby's voice begins playing, you won't die. And then this purple corpse stands up. Finally, beating Golden Freddy mode on very hard, you get this cutscene. Okay, so maybe maybe it is Mike. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore. So the skin suit is probably the purple guy we've been seeing in the cutscenes, like in FNAF 3. And that's after he vomited the endoskeleton. I don't know what's going on with the endoskeleton. I assume at some point we'll maybe eventually find out. But I think that's my best understanding of this. Mike is purple guy. He may or may not have had like a terminal illness or something which made him want to fuse himself with animatronics so that he would like live forever. But then his body started rotting because I don't know, they just like didn't do it right. And then eventually he vomits up the exoskeleton, but for some reason his soul still possesses the skin suit. And I guess that's why when the skin suit eventually gets inside Bring Bonnie and they like fuse together. He's still alive because he was just a soul already inside a skin suit that's now inside Spring Bonnie. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Oh God. <laughs> I have no idea. Father. Yeah. It's me, Michael. I did it. I found it. It was right where you said it would be. They were all there. They didn't recognize me at first, but... Th was he talking about the spring trap suit? I don't think so. I'm like, what is he talking about? Yeah, I found it. It was right there. Oh, I wonder. Is he talking about, like, the locked box or whatever that we see in um, FNAF 4? Because I don't think we've ever... Had that brought up again, there was like that box that was locked and it said something like, you know, some secrets need to wait till later or something like that. I feel like it might be just because, yeah, we still haven't gotten like any clarification of like what that is or what the significance of it is. Then they thought I was you. <laughs> and I found her. I found her. put her back together. Just like you asked me to. Okay, yeah, that's probably the little girl that was talking in between each night and sister location, who I believe to be Mike's daughter, but I'm not totally sure anymore. Maybe she's William's daughter. And then she would be like Mike's sister, maybe? 
She's free now. But something is wrong with me. I should be dead, but I'm not. I've been living in shadows. There is only one thing left for me to do now. I'm going to come find you. I'm going to come find you. I don't know where William is right now. Yep. Oh my God, that is so wild. Wow. So clearly the community <laughs> yeah. had a lot to chew yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. Oh, interesting. It'll be kind of fun, yeah, to see what the community thinks. Don't worry, I will not take these to heart. I know they're just theories. So, the community. Like I said, this was the beginning of a paradigm yeah. shift for the series, and the community could feel it. I feel like this is where <laughs> the story is going to get really confusing. Let's play wise, it was your standard fare. Mm -hmm. The big players hopped in and some new people as well. Because a bunch of stuff was revealed in the source code, MatPat even had a theory video out before the game oh, was wow. even released. The music, as always, was fantastic. Living Tombstone came in clutch yet again. And Join Us for a Bite is really catchy. Okay, and then DA that Games later. released a sister location song before the game even came oh, wow. out. And somehow it predicted like the <laughs> whole plot. Nice. Well, let's talk about the part you've all been waiting for, the theory. Yes. This is when stuff became actually convoluted. Yeah. I mean, like, really incomprehensible in a lot of ways. I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> I feel like I'm starting to lose my mind for sure. So I'm not going to be able to give a clear cut. This is what the community thinks. Yeah. So I'm just going to give out some highlights. I feel like there's got to be a lot of differing opinions because there's a lot to chew on. And I could see a lot of stuff being interpreted in a lot of different ways. First, let's talk about the big one this whole game taking place underneath God. the FNAF 4 house. There's actually an interesting debate around this. Some people think that it's just that, a bunker built by William Afton underneath his okay, house. Okay, so it is William Afton's house. So I think I'm on track with that. At least people who were playing the game up to this point seem to think it was William Afton's house. A bunker built by William Afton underneath his house, further confirming Man, that the FNAF 4 family is the Afton family. William built this room to keep track of his children using the Fredbear nanny cams, perhaps, after oh. his daughter was killed by his own creations. Okay, 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 okay. So the girl is William's daughter and then Mike's sister, probably. And then who's the crying child? Is Mike the crying child? But um, I could also see Mike being the brother who killed the crying child. I feel like that's another pretty big possibility too. God dang, dude. The Afton family got really fucked over by these animatronics, didn't they? <laughs> there was the crying child who got bit by um, Fred Bear, and now it appears the daughter. I guess, yeah, oh, there was. There was the daughter's room in the house too. So she was the little girl who got scooped by um, Circus Baby too. Jesus Christ. I think my thoughts thus far is that Mike Afton is either the brother who inadvertently killed his little brother in that scene in FNAF 4, or he's the crying child who was put into a skin suit, <laughs> infused with an animatronic, but then started rotting and eventually became purple guy. And yet that kind of makes more sense though, honestly. <laughs> Because then we know that Purple Guy gets locked into Springtrap, who appears to be implied to be Mike Afton. So is that really it? I don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Others think that the disconnect between the layout of the minigame house and the house in-game means that this is actually a place where William Afton tests his funtime animatronics out on children, Ooh. or more specifically, Yikes. the older brother. After the bite, William begins to hate his yeah. oldest son, who caused it. So FNAF 4 isn't actually a dream. It's a horrible punishment slash experiment that William oh. is inflicting on his son. But then oh, shit. That does make sense, though. I didn't even think about that. Oh, my God. But yeah, I mean, that makes sense. The dad would start hating the son because he inadvertently got, you know, the younger son killed. And then, oh, God, he starts doing experiments on him. Jesus Christ. Maybe Mike is the older brother then. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep going back and forth this whole time because if he got experimented on and then he died and then William like decided to fuse him with an animatronic and that's when he started rotting and became purple guy etc etc then that would make sense too. I think so. I'm going back to that theory. <laughs> I feel like I've completely lost my mind. I have no idea what's going on anymore. I'm just making up stuff. 
then you think, wait a minute, the fun times don't look anything like the nightmares. That's true. Well, that's where the next theory comes in. At this okay. point in the series, the second novel had been released. The oh twist god, I haven't even gotten into the novels at all yet. That's gonna be a lot, isn't it? Did once. As I've said before, we may talk about the novels at some point later, but this is all you need to know about them for this. The Twisted Ones introduced some animatronics that may not have been the fun times, but are very similar. Okay. Segmented, plasticky animatronics that could open up to hold a person inside. What's interesting oh, about these, Jesus. though, is the very futuristic technology that they have. Okay, so that was the purpose of making them, like, open up was so that they could literally have a person fit inside. Kind of seems like it. They essentially have a chip that tricks your brain into thinking they either look like monsters or friendly cartoon characters. Uh -huh. So while the books aren't a perfect one-to-one -one with the games, people took this concept and applied it to maybe Funtime Freddy's power chip and went, hey, okay. these could be the nightmares just with a new coat of paint. Okay, so it just kind of like masks the appearance of them to where you like perceive them differently. With Custom Night, there was a huge debate yeah. now on who <laughs> Purple Guy wondering. even was. While for <laughs> oh a long my time, God. we had started to assume that Pink Guy and Purple Guy were the same character. Now we weren't so sure. This meant who was Springtrap? <laughs> And so began the Mike Trap yeah. versus Will Trap debate. At yeah. present, I believe Scott literally curb stomped Mike Trap, but at the time, this was a big point of contention. Okay. There was also a discussion. So curb stomped as in he like denied that theory. So Mike isn't purple guy. Oh God, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna listen to the video and see what happens next before I start giving any more theories. I feel like I've changed my mind like 20 times already this video. ...about why William Afton even made the evil Funtime murder robots in the first place. Some people thought that it was just so that he could continue to murder children uh, now that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza had closed down. Others thought it was him experimenting, trying to figure out what it is that kept his victims' souls alive and attached to these robots yeah. in a way to bring back his son, the bite victim. That was my assumption, is that it has to do with trying to bring his son back to life. Because I think that makes more sense for him to have, like, an actual goal and not him just being, like, an evil fuck. I mean, like, he is an evil fuck, you know, regardless. But I think him having, like, a more sympathetic goal of, like, wanting to bring his son back to life definitely, like, characterizes him better but that's just my opinion. I will put you back together. Yeah. I also want to talk about- Yeah, especially too with that line, like the I will put you back together. I think that makes the most sense. And I think it's the most interesting way to like interpret him thus far. I also want to talk about a debate that really inspired a lot of fan lore from okay. full-blown whole theories oh, to FNAF VHS fan. Oh yeah, there is the FNAF VHS stuff. I've been wanting to watch those. Please let me know when it's safe for me to watch those videos. I saw Blaze reacted to them and they look so cool. I want to watch them too. What is Michael's intent at the end when he says, I'm going to come and find you? Yeah. The initial thought is that he's following his father's orders again. I feel like it could be revenge though if he's, I just said I wasn't gonna say any more theories until the end of the video, but I can't help myself. I feel like it's revenge though, because if he, I don't know, I like the theory about him being like the older brother and he was getting experimented on by his father. Cause I feel like that makes the most sense. And if that's the case, I feel like I'm going to come and find you as like, a revenge thing like I'm gonna I'm gonna pay you back for what you've done to me you know like because it's like I get why he would be upset at his son for doing that but at the same time he was a dumb teenager and it's like it's it's a very difficult situation for sure for sure but he should not have been experimenting on them and you know throwing animatronics at him if that is what happened but there's another interpretation yes he's going to go kill me him. that's what I think yes yes <laughs> that's what I think too I'm glad there's some people that agree with me this sort of intertwines with the idea that all of the night guards we play as, FNAF 1 through 3, and come to think of it 4, are actually Mike Afton, okay. sharing a name, being fired for odor, all of that stuff. Oh, now he was fired for odor? Wait, which was that Before. one? Tampering with the animatronics, general unprofessionalism, but odor. <laughs> Wait, if he really is like the decaying, okay. I think he said that Scott denied that theory, that purple guy in that cutscene was Mike, or he curb stomped it is what he said. But if you were to think about it, if he was the decaying purple guy, it would make sense why he was fired for odor. Just a thought. I guess it could be that purple guy isn't Mike, but he is the person we were playing as in this game where he's fired for odor. I guess that makes sense too. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure I'll figure it out later, maybe. <laughs> Order all of that stuff. Now seeing the destruction his father has brought, he's trying to put an end to it. Now, yeah. of course, there's all sorts of other theories now about yeah. what this game means and the lore of everything. But sure. at the time, these are the big ones I remember. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, I can see the rating. Okay, so... I was kind of curious to see yeah, how people like this game. I feel like this is definitely one of the strongest ones, in my opinion. Where does this game go on the tier list? Honestly, A tier. I know I some people so. are probably throwing their hands up in the air and going, <laughs> why not S tier? But when I'm thinking about the quintessential FNAF game, if I want to show someone the Five Nights at Freddy's series, and I want to go, what is the perfect game? It's FNAF 1 or 2. I can well, understand Sister that. Loki That's still like the original kind of like product. I do feel like those two represent the series the best in the way that, yeah, it's like the original format and executed in the best way. While Sister Location may technically be the most well executed or best Five Nights at Freddy's game, it doesn't capture the feeling and the yeah. simplicity that the first two games do. I kind of agree with that. I do feel like it's the best made game just with the fact there's like so much more story and there's like all these different mini games you get to play through and then there's literally that extra room where you can play like a more classic FNAF style game if you want. I do feel like that is kind of what makes this like the best made one out of the series, but I get what he's saying about like, I feel like the first two, yeah, really do capture like the simplicity of the games as well as how like impactful they are while being so simplistic. I do, I do agree with him there. It's really well made and unique, but honestly, if I want to sit down and play a FNAF game, I'm still going to go for FNAF 1 or 2. I think it's a perfect spot. Gameplay and execution wise, it is far above FNAF yes. 3 and 4. I do agree with that. But it just doesn't hit the right spot that makes it an S tier like FNAF 1 and 2. Okay, interesting. It would be a similarly long break before we got another FNAF game. Mostly, Scott was working behind the scenes on things like the next novel and the movies and things like that. But when the next, next game Pizza came. Simulator. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm I am excited. really excited to cover the next game. I mean, I know I say that about all of them, but this next game is literally Ooh. in my top three favorite FNAF games of all time. Ooh, hi. Hey, thanks but... for watching. Okay, interesting. That definitely gets me more hyped up to play Pizza Simulator. I've been really looking forward to that one. So yeah, once again, shout out to Sagan Hawks for their video. I'll link it in the description if you guys want to check out the full thing. It was definitely uh, very informative. And now, last but not least, we're going to watch the Sister Location Secrets and Easter Eggs. I feel like I've probably seen most of them through this video already, but we'll see if there's any extras that I um, haven't seen quite yet. In this video, is by Dr. Hottie 1987 so I'll be sure to link their account in the description if you'd like to check them out. You can hear help me in the music the main screen. Oh. Wait a second. Oh. It kind of sounds like they're singing. They're doing it on beat too. Help me. Help me. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of jamming to it. Is that what Funtime Foxy was dancing to? I I get it now. I guess I could symbolize the maintenance guys. I feel like that makes the most sense. Throughout the whole game, you can always hear Baby saying 1578. And I want to know what the importance of these numbers are. <laughs> Does she sound like that? <laughs> Shit. Jesus Christ. Why does she sound like Satan? Well, I mean, I know she's Satan, but usually she sounds more sassy and cute. Seven. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what happened to you, girly? Oh my One, God. Five. <laughs> Look at this fucking... <laughs> this video they have. <laughs> Staring into my soul. Maybe they just slowed it down for the video. Exotic. You can press the exotic butters in the extras menu. Butters. Okay. Exotic butters. Exotic butters. Exotic butters. <laughs> oh, exotic it just says that. Butters. Okay. In the extras menu, you can find and play the Circus Baby minigame. Okay, yeah, I did this one when I was trying to unlock the other area for a little bit. But then I gave up. FNAF 4 map within the sister location map. Okay, it's gonna show where it is. Okay, yeah, that is it. Okay, so this is our bedroom. Then Bonnie would come here to scare us. And then Chica would come here to scare us. Freddy spawned like already, like I guess in the closet of our room. And then Foxy would spawn over here and then like sneak into our room. Okay, I got it. Okay, I think that was the other bedroom we were in when we were playing like the mini games in FNAF 4. Then there was like the living room, the kitchen, the little girl's room. And then there's like the hallway that leads to Spring Bonnie and then Fred Bear. I'm not really sure how that connects to over here. Um, maybe like it's the downstairs or upstairs or something. A little bit mask. Oh, I hate it here. Oh, it's got like the ghost eyes too. Interesting. Bitty Bab in the elevator. Oh. 
Oh god! <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm glad I didn't get that one. <laughs> Yikes! Ugh. Bitty Bab in the Circus Gallery. Okay, I don't think I got that one either. Those little guys are everywhere, aren't they? Minarina in the control room. Oh yeah, he mentioned that too. You get those sometimes. Minarina and Bitty Bad. Oh, in the house. Ooh. Oh <laughs> lord. Oh yeah, this was like on that um other night if you got the fake ending, right? Interesting. They're just watching you until Ennard comes in and finishes the job, you know. Marina and Popqua. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> These little bitches are following me home! Oh, Jack Septic Guy, what? Is he in this game? <laughs> I didn't know Jack was in this game. Okay, so I guess Jack found Chica when he was playing it or something. That's probably a glitch though, right? Because it looks like the Chica from like the first game. Question mark? Innard is looking at you in parts and service. Oh god, he looks even worse without the cover on. I don't like this eye contact. This is too much. I don't like this. Oh, yeah. I remember hearing this. I guess they don't know what it's saying still. I assume it's inner talking to us, right? Oh, what the? Heights. I guess this might be what it's saying when you like clear up the audio. It kind of just seems like a bunch of random words you would say at, like a company meeting or something. Yeah, interesting. I wonder what it means. Okay, well, uh, cool. Yeah, I guess this about finishes it. Oh my God, I feel like I'm so confused on the lore. I think I'm kind of leaning towards the like, Mike is the older brother who killed the crying child and got experimented on by his dad, William, and now he's trying to get revenge on him. I think that's kind of the theory I'm more so leaning into, but I feel like by the time I play the next game, like none of the theories that were even mentioned in this video are even gonna be applicable anymore. So, so I'm not gonna get very attached to it. I'm just gonna let the game take me on a journey. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so glad you're on this journey with me going through all the Five Nights at Freddy's games and lore. It has been quite the experience. <laughs> I'm sure it's just gonna keep on going and keep on being quite the experience for a long time to come. Oh man, I am scared but excited to see what the next game has in store for me. I believe it is Pizza Simulator is the next one I'm playing. And that one has always very much intrigued me just because the trailers for it were so like different, you know, compared to the other ones. It almost seemed to just be like footage of like a mini game gameplay of like Freddy delivering pizzas. But then I remember in the comments, you guys were like, no, this game is really important to the series actually. So I'm very curious to see what that game's all about, what it's even gonna look like and what we're gonna do in it and how all of that's gonna go down. But yeah, thanks guys so much for watching. Please do leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you did enjoy this video and if you are enjoying me getting into the FNAF series. But yeah, once again, thank you guys. I appreciate you and I will see you real soon.